Hi there, in the previous videos, the five standard languages will be explained, and also some projects were implemented using these languages. In this video, I'll explain some important points related to SFC language, after that, I'll start to implement a practical project using Factory IO. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to receive the latest and the greatest content I will be posting through the channel. All right. Like the previous video, I've created a new standard project in SFC. To learn other abilities and options of this language, let me create some variables. Okay, if you remember, in the previous video, I've introduced four types of actions, but only IEC actions were used. Now, I'm going to see how the other three types, which are main, entry and exit actions, can be used. First let's define a main action. Well, one of these two modes must be selected. They determine duplication mode for the selected step. Let's continue with the first mode. I'll explain them later. As you see, an action is defining. On the right side, the action name, and also its language can be changed. Now, I can write a program, like those which were written in the previous videos. For example, the initial step can be used to reset the variables. Ok, I've created this action for the current step. It will be executed as the main action, when the step is activated. Note that, this small triangular indicates a main action has been selected for the step. Also, on the right side, we can see which actions are executed as the main, entry, and exit actions. For now, only init underscore active has been selected as the main action. Similarly, you can define entry and exit actions. Remember, CodeSys executes the entry action, one time, after the step is activated. Then the main action is executed continuously, and finally, the exit action is executed one time, when the step is deactivated. Now, let's see what the duplication mode is. If you remember, I've selected the first mode for the current step. Now, if I duplicate it, the new step will use the same actions. Now, Let's test the second mode. As you see, the action name has been changed a little, and also if I duplicate the step, a new action will be created too, for the new step. Well, let me press Ctrl plus Z on my keyboard, and also disable this mode. Now, let's use the help window, to get familiar with two important groups of variables, whose names are implicit variables and SFC flags. Codesys produce them automatically. Well, here are some details about implicit variables and SFC flags. Implicit variables can be used to monitor the status of steps and IEC actions, and SFC flags can influence the processing of an SFC diagram. Let's learn how an SFC flag can be generated. Similarly, you will be able to learn how implicit variables can be used. For example, let's see how this flag, SFC in it, can be generated. The first way is called implicit generation of SFC flags. Based on the first two lines, let me open the properties window of my POU, whose language is SFC. Now, let's go to SFC settings tab. 
To enable each flag, I need to disable the default settings, and then select my desired flags. Now, I've selected SFC in it, and SFC reset. Although CodeZs has not displayed them inside the declaration section, but I can use them like other Boolean variables. Just to check this point, let me use SFC in it here, and then compile the project. There won't be any error, because the flag has been defined successfully. Note that, if the online mode is selected, the state of this flag can be seen inside the declaration section. Now, let me create a new POU. Assume, I need to reset the SFC sequence using this flag from another POU. All right, I want to reset the SFC sequence when my emergency buttons is pressed. Remember, this flag is defined for this POU and it doesn't belong to this one. So, I need to write PLC underscore PRG before the SFC flag. Naturally, the new POU must be executed. So let's add it under the task configuration. Now, Let's compile the whole of my project. As you see, there is an error. Because this flag is no input of its POU. So, I cannot use SFC flags inside another POU, using the first way. I can use the second way, explicit generation of SFC flags, if I need to use an SFC flags inside another POU. As you see, here are some examples that can help you. To use an SFC flag inside a different POU, I need to define it as an input variable of my POU, or as a global variable. Let's use the first way. Ok, I've defined this SFC flag manually, as an input of my SFC program. Therefore, let's go to the SFC settings tab, to deactivate its declare setting. Now, let's compile my program. As you see, there isn't any error. Therefore, from this POU, I can reset the sequence, to its initial step. I'll use SFC flags inside the next practical project. Now, Let's see how a complex condition can be used for a transition. As you see, I can directly write simple conditions in structured text, but if you need to write a more complex condition, or you want to use another language, a transition should be defined, and then call it like actions. Note that, the selected name for the transition, will be used as its output. Alright, let me write a simple program. Pay attention, the result of conditions must return a boolean variable. As I've mentioned before, the name of transition should be used as its output variable. Well, based on the inserted and logic, when all these three variables are enabled, this transition will be activated. Therefore, if I use it here, CodeZs will exit from the initial step, and go to step 0. Alright, let's compare SFC language with others. Usually, SFC is suitable for a group of tasks, which must be done in a specific order. Other languages, especially ladder and FBD diagrams, are suitable for tasks, which work independently. Note that, on the right side, all conditions are checked during each scan cycle. In consequence, all of them must be written exactly, in contrast to transitions, 
which are normally simple and short. Because the controller needs to check a few conditions, related to one state. Note that, any language can be used to write a program. It depends on your willingness and ability. Remember, in the previous video, an SFC sequence was rewritten using structured text language. Now, let's use SFC language, to implement a practical project related to this automated warehouse inside factory IO. As you see, there are several tasks in a specific order, to receive boxes and put them into the racks. Well, I pressed the stop push button. Based on my program, which will be explained in the next video, the crane will be stopped, after reaching to its initial state. Again, I need to press the start push button, to start the automated warehouse system. Now, let me explain the necessary steps, to implement the automated warehouse. As you know, the first step is using factory IO, to design the system. Like previous videos, I've selected a predefined project. Automated warehouse. Therefore you can find it and use it like me, without spending any time on the designing step. Now, let's get acquainted with the important actuators and sensors. As you see, on both sides of the crane, there are two conveyors. Also, there is a sensor at the end, that detects boxes. The main equipment is the stacker crane. It has three digital actuators, whose names are lift, forks right, and forks left. Let me test them to see their performance. Well, to move boxes along the racks, this actuator and sensor must be used. Let's see how they can be used. The actuator works based on an integer number from 0 to 55. Rack numbers start from 1 to 54. Now, the 10th position has been selected. As you see, this sensor, moving X, is enabled during the moving step. Note that, to stop the crane, number 0 must be used. And when the crane must go to the initial state, to receive boxes, number 55 must be entered. Ok, in the next video, I'll start the programming step, using SFC language, to implement the automated warehouse. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.